This video is to demonstrate the GainSpan online tool to build uh, your special firmware for your application uh, using the SDK Builder online tool. Uh, first, you'll need to have access to GainSpan secure portion of the website. Um, this is the same portion. This is the same section uh, where you can access data sheets, documentation, software, and so forth. So when you log in, this is your this is your default page. And what we'll go into is uh, we'll go into the SDK Builder. Um, there are two versions: one for the previous generations of uh, gain of, of modules. Here, I'm going to create a custom serial to Wi-Fi firmware and change the baud rate from 9600 to 115200 um, because the default uh, evaluation board baud rate is set at 9600. So in order to change that baud rate uh, in production, and the easiest way to do it is to create a custom firmware build with a default baud rate of 115200. So, uh, my module is a GS2000 based uh, module. So you'll enter the animation stage. For a lot more details on the SDK Builder and some of the uh, features, uh, there is a link to the SDK Builder, what it is, what it is um, and um, SDK Builder user's guide. Again, this video is just a quick way of uh, generating, changing my firmware to use a, baud, a different baud rate. Um, I'm not going to go into every single detail that's on the SDK Builder, but I'll talk a little bit at a high level on some of the important ones. So I'll click Next. Uh, here we need to choose the build type. Uh, I'm going to do a new build. That what you have selected here, is, your your choices here is a new build because uh, I'm doing a custom one or default eval build. build. Default is if you've lost your USB stick. Uh, that came with your evaluation board, or the uh, you've blown away your original serial to Wi-Fi default um, firmware that came with the evaluation board. If you select default, um, it could build uh, that default version that uh, your evaluation board came with. But I'm going to create a new build first for myself. You need to choose what type of module that you have. So we have the GS2011. Uh, GS2100, both antenna versions are listed here. Um, and then the different uh, module versions. So I have a version 3.3 or later. Um, for the 2100, there's a latest version out sampling and shipping right now is 3.2. And then there's the MIPS version um, that's, that's also um, available. So my module is the MIE. Um, my module version is 3.3, uh, so I can use this online tool. If your module version is earlier than these, uh, I highly recommend getting an updated version from Future Electronics uh, or for your uh, future salesperson, as uh, there could be issues by using a firmware version that's targeted for version uh, um, that's listed here or later, or later. So I would not recommend programming these versions um, on modules that have an earlier um, version stamped on them. There is a label on the modules and the top right hand corner, it'll tell you what version that you have. So I have version 3.3, uh, GS 2011 3.3. So I will select this one on the module version. Firmware version, I'm just gonna use the standard 5.1.1 uh, not going to mess with the beta version. This will obviously change over time, um, so you always want to use the standard release version. Internal flash, well, this will be dependent on the module that you choose. So going back here, if I chose a GS2100, it has two megabytes of flash. So um, you do not need to select this. Uh, this is auto automatically generated for you by the type of module you select. Uh, external flash. Uh, kind of the same concept, depending on what you're doing. If you're writing an uh, internal application and putting external flash, this will be selectable. And I think this is actually not supported at, for my application for serial to Wi-Fi. Um, so that's, that's why it's not hi highlighted. And the build output type. So actually, I need to go back and select the CAPS version. 
and now I can actually I want to do a custom package um, custom package is is uh, just the firmware not a lot of documentation SDK package will come with more documentation um, and but it's the same documentation you can, documentation you could find on the uh, resources but here again I'm just trying to generate new firmware um, and so the I want the zip file just to have um, the firmware and as low uh, documentation as possible to keep the zip file size smaller and then uh, my actual application I'm doing is serial to Wi-Fi hosted so because I am going to use um, an external command uh, uh, AT command response with a hosted MCU or my laptop in this case so I will click next here you will see the actual uh, different uh, tab settings so this is a summary of what we just selected um, in the module and the actual details are in these tabs here so we're starting off with the host interface I am doing serial to Wi-Fi um, these are reserved for future use and depending on what you're trying to do so I'm going to select serial to Wi-Fi host connections um, I, I am using the UART but there is an option to do dual UART one for command and one for data or if I wanted if I wanted to use spy to my host MCU I could select it here um, and there are also other options here but I'm going to use a very simple single UART here this is reserved for future use when their uh, IP to Wi-Fi based firmware is released um, and some some of the specific uh, RTOS stacks that are available uh, none are available at the moment but these are, this is here for future use so we click next host settings uh, I want to change to 115.200 I'm not going to change anything here um, if I went back to the host interface and selected spy which I'll go ahead and do now um, if I selected spy you could see here that uh, it'll show the spy uh, specific details for the host settings here um, so I'm just going to go back to UART and again I want to change it to 115.200 that's the major change that I want WLAN, this is where some of the WLAN features are uh, embedded into the module. So I will do, um, I want a Wi Fi station and I want to support uh, limited AP mode. And here within the Wi Fi station and limited AP, you could actually select some of the details like the regulatory. I'm um, operating in the US, you could actually set the channel and set the SSID. Um, but because I can also pro program these via the AT commands, uh, over the UART, I'm just going to not touch this at all. Um, but then if you are specifically uh, want some default modes, um, this is where you can uh, program uh, the, the specific details. Uh, this is reserved for future, future use for, for the 802.15.4 radio. Again, the Zigbee IP modes. Zigbee IP is uh, kind of the targets to use applications for. Uh, 8215.4, I'm not using it. Uh, concurrent mode, currently I'm not interested in it, uh, and uh, so I'm not going to select anything here. And networking services, so I just want to support simple IPv IPv4, uh, DHCP server, uh, I will need that for my soft AP mode. I can actually set the number of addresses and least times. Um, when, when, with how many devices that connect to me and I also just want to support a simple ping um, trace and route function as you can see there are other services here that are listed um, you can also do TLS TCP over client over server um, and then if you're hosting a web page on there you can support the H HTTPS or HTTP server and uh, selecting these, you can actually set the username and password if you want to access that web page, uh, the URL, um, number of clients, and so forth. So, each one of these network services, there are some details on there. But uh, I just want to use a very, a very simple uh, IP socket connection. Um, uh, so, I'm choosing a uh, very limited number of uh, features here. Energy measurement unit. This is uh, another type of uh, 
and uh, feature. I'm not going to mess with this. Provisioning, if you want to support WPS, uh, you select it here. But I'm going to do most of my provisioning over the UART anyways. Uh, firmware update. Uh, you can actually host a web page to do firmware updates on, on the um, on the game span module and this is where you can load your custom pages and so forth I'm not gonna mess with this clock and power settings I'm just gonna use the default memory settings and again these are all specifically detailed um, in some of the documentation and in my application I'm not gonna worry about any of those in mis mis miscellaneous you could actually uh, give your build name this build name would also will, will generate the actual output file name and also the firmware name that when you program into the module and you do a version check then this name will specifically be reported back as well so there's an AT command to check the version over the UART and one of the um, parameters is the actual build file name or, or binary name so this is this will also be um, which will be reported back. So we'll just say Alan serial to Wi-Fi 115.200. That's the build that I want. Click Next. And it'll give you a summary of your build. Uh, there is also a build config file that will be included in your, in your um, zip folder um, once you create it. So I'll hit OK. And then we'll build. And an email will be sent to me once my build is completed. And, and once you get to the email, you can log back in and go to your build history and download your build from here. So you can see my current build was pending. I actually did one earlier, um, about half an hour ago, almost half an hour ago. Now I'm able to download it. So. Once you download uh, the package, uh, it'll be ready to go. It'll be a zip file that you download. Now, just to give you an idea what that zip file looks like, here is uh, one that I did earlier. So GS2100 custom package, UR 1500. Um, this is actually a zip file yeah, that I downloaded within that. Um, zip file or these file folders so it'll come with a programming tool um, it'll also come with the firmware released here um, here's the build config file I mentioned earlier uh, it's probably better to open this with uh, um, word and here we go with word you can see all the actual specific details of that build instead of having to go back to um, the website uh, and find the specific details. Anyways, this is the video for how to use the GameSpan Online SDK Builder Tool. Thank you.